Mr. President, I ask that this second statement be placed in a separate part in the record. Without objection. <clears throat> Mr. President, Americans owe a de great debt of gratitude to the health care workers on the front lines of the fights against the COVID-19 pandemic. Can't tell you how many stories I've read, heartbreaking stories of these health care workers who are so depressed over the number of infections, the suffering that people are going through, and of course those whose lives are taken by this coronavirus. I can't imagine what it's like physically and mentally for what they go through. Bless them. Bless them for caring enough for us and for our families to risk their own lives and go to work every single day. I want to spend a minute and talk about a special group of these health care workers, immigrants. That's right, immigrants. Consider this, one in six health care and social service workers are immigrants. 3.1 million out of 18.7 million. Over 3 million immigrants. These immigrants are playing a crucial role in the battle against pandemics. And yet the president continues to disparage them, falsely claiming that they're a drain on society. He wishes they would leave. I hope they never do. I've come to the floor to tell the story of one. I'll continue to highlight these stories because we need to put faces on this issue. You need to understand who these people are, who are immigrants to this country and willing to risk their lives to save ours. I invite my colleagues to do the same. Tell the stories in your own states, and I can just guarantee you, wherever you are from, there are immigrant health heroes. Not to take anything away from those who are not new immigrants, but these people need special attention at a time when there's so much criticism of immigration to this country of immigrants. Many of these healthcare workers are young immigrants who came here as children. They're known as dreamers. I know because 20 years ago I introduced the DREAM Act so that these young people brought to this country as toddlers and infants and little kids have a chance to be part of our future. They're American in every way except their immigration status. I joined with Republican Dick Luger years ago on a bipartisan basis to call on the president to use his authority to protect these dreamers from being deported. President Obama responded. He created the DACA program. DACA provided temporary protection from deportation of dreamers if they registered with the government, paid a $600 filing fee, went through a criminal background check, and had no serious problems. They were allowed to stay two years at a time, not be deported, legally work in America. More than 800,000 dreamers came forward and received DACA protection. And let me tell you what they did. They turned around and became teachers and nurses and soldiers and small business owners and a hundred other things important to America. And listen to this, more than 200,000 DACA recipients are essential critical infrastructure workers. I didn't make that up. That came out of President Trump's own Department of Homeland Security, that number. Among these essential workers are 41,700 DACA recipients in the healthcare industry. These include doctors, intensive care nurses, paramedics, and respiratory therapists. Understand this. These are undocumented people in America, brought here as children, grew up here, went to school here, got an education, developed skills and training, and now we need them in this pandemic. 41,700 of them. On September the 5th, 2017, President Trump repealed DACA. Hundreds of thousands of dreamers face losing their work permits and being deported from this country to places that many of them barely remember. Thank goodness the court stepped in to, to stop the president's action. But the president decided to appeal the case. And now across the street in the Supreme Court, they're sitting on a case that will decide the fate of 800,000 of these DACA protectees. Many of them, thousands of them, healthcare workers who are doing essential work every day. We could get a decision from the court any day. Will we be better off if 41,000 of these DACA healthcare professionals are deported from this country in the midst of this pandemic? No sensible person believes we would be. If the court rules in favor of President Trump, up to 200,000 essential workers in America would be sidelined in the middle of this national emergency. Many of them face deportation. I sent a letter to the president with 17 of my Senate colleagues last month, urging him to extend the work authorization for DACA recipients to the end of the year 
it's not too much to ask. They've lived in this country for years. They passed the criminal background check. For goodness sakes, Mr. President, don't get tough on these people when we need them the most. But if you consider what the president said about immigrants over and over again, I know it's unlikely that he's going to have a moment of caring when it comes to their future. So Congress has to step in. The HEROES Act, which the House of Representatives passed last week, and we did not even consider this week in the United States Senate. This HEROES Act includes a provision to automatically extend work authorizations for DACA recipients. When critics of that House action come to the floor and talk about all the benefits for undocumented people living in this country, this is what they're talking about. The extension of DACA protection for thousands of essential workers in this country who are protected by DACA. Oh, it sounds like they're opening the doors for illegal people to come in here and get royal treatment in America. The opposite is true. These are people who are risking their lives providing health care and essential services across America. The HEROES Act that passed in the House of Representatives simply said, we're not going to deport them for the rest of the calendar year. What a radical suggestion that we could use their help, we need their help to the rest of the year. We certainly do. And those who come and mock this provision by saying it's just a giveaway to illegal immigrants really are doing a disservice to, the, to these people and the sacrifice they're making. Ultimately, we need to give these dreamers the chance to become citizens. I believe it now, and I've believed it for 20 years. It's been that long since I introduced the DREAM Act, the bipartisan bill which would accomplish that. Last year, the House passed the DREAM and Promise Act, which would have solved this problem based on the DREAM Act. The vote was 237 to 187 in the House. Leader McConnell has refused to even consider calling that measure for consideration in the Senate. And it isn't because we're overlooked, overworked. Just take a look at this empty chamber. Over the years, I've come to the floor of the Senate more than 100 times to tell the stories of dreamers. I want you to know who they are. These stories show what's at stake when we consider the fate and future of DACA. Today, I want to tell you about Javier Quiroz. Castro. Make sure I get the right chart here. Well, maybe both of them are Javier. But here's Javier dressed for work. He's the 121st dreamer whose story I've told on the Senate floor. Javier's parents brought him to the United States when he was three years old and he grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. His father worked in construction as a bricklayer. His mother cleaned homes and office buildings. As the oldest child and the best English speaker, Javier took care of his three younger siblings and helped his family navigate the challenges of being in America. Javier went to a private Christian college in Nashville, Lipscomb University. At Lipscomb, he, deserved, he discovered his love of nursing. He enrolled in the School of Nursing and did his clinical training at Vanderbilt Medical Center. Javier graduated in May 2013 with his bachelor's in science of nursing Javier received the Spirit of Nursing Award, which each year is given to only one nursing student who has best delivered quality care. Because President Obama established DACA in 2012, Javier had a chance. Before that, he had no chance to become a registered nurse in this country. But he had a chance, and he took advantage of it. Javier now lives in Houston, Texas, works at Houston Methodist Hospital. He's part of a team taking care of patients with COVID-19. This is what he wears to work. Javier wrote me a letter, and here's what he said. Thanks to DACA, I've been able to save a lot of lives. I've been able to be there with patients at their final moments of life. I've been able to take care of people of many different backgrounds, nationalities, races, socioeconomic levels, and cultures. This wouldn't be complete if I didn't introduce you to Javier's daughter. Take a look at this beautiful little girl. This is Isabel Quiroz. A few weeks ago, she took her first steps. I'll bet she's about the same age as my granddaughter, whose birthday is Friday this week. She's about to take her first steps, too. But this beautiful little girl, Javier's little girl, her fate and future are at stake, too, in this debate in the United States Senate. I want to wish Isabel a happy birthday tomorrow and my little granddaughter, Joe, a happy birthday on Friday. You see, Javier's wife is also a nurse. She and Javier worry every, every, every day about not infecting their baby daughter as they go to work to save other people. But they still get up every day and go to work to care for their patients. 
I want to thank Javier Quiroz Castro for his service. He is indeed a health care hero. He is an immigrant health care hero. He puts himself and his family at risk in order to save American lives. He shouldn't have to worry about a decision across the street at the Supreme Court will, which would deport him back to a country he cannot even remember. We must do better. We are better than that as a country. To say to someone like Javier, well, thank you for working so darn hard. Thank you for getting through nursing school with highest grades. Thank you for your professionalism. Thank you for risking your life for America. But I'm sorry, buddy. You're undocumented. Get out of this country. The bill that passed the House would protect him to the end of the year, to the end of the year. And yet members come to the floor and mock this bill and say, oh, you're trying to give things away to illegal immigrants. Illegal immigrants like Javier, get real, get serious, be human. We've got to do better for Javier and the DACA recipients. They're counting on us, those of us in the Senate, to solve this crisis created by President Trump's action. As long as I'm a senator, I will continue to come to the floor of the Senate to advocate for Javier and the Dreamers. I've done it for a long time, but the job's not finished. It would be an American tragedy to deport this brave and talented nurse who's saving lives in Houston, Texas, as we speak. We must ensure that Javier and hundreds of thousands of others in our essential workforce are not forced to stop working when we need them the most. Ultimately, we need to pass legislation to demonstrate who we are, what we believe in, what our values are. What does it say about America if we say to Javier, we don't need you? We do. We need him and so many just like him who are performing essential services in this time of national emergency. Mr. President, I yield the floor.